I am so excited. Uh, a big concert tonight here in Rochester, Blue Cross Arena. So much so, I had I just had to get tickets and go. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to. I, you know, the thing, are you in a Hall of Fame anywhere? I, I'm, me neither. Am I? No. No, me neither. So, Robert Lamb and Lee Lognane, uh, founding members of Chicago, are with us today, and uh, we are thrilled. I got to tell you, I had on my kitchen counter before I left to come to work today my vinyl Chicago collection. <laughs> I did transfer to CDs eventually, right. and a Robert Lamb solo album. I believe it was called Skinny Boy. Mm. Oh, Temporary okay. Jones, first I remember first all those. So, yeah, so I was going to bring it all in, and what do I do? Because you, you I got senior it. brain, I, I left it all. Yeah. Left well, it. You, you always have the memories. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming. This is awesome. This Thanks is for having us. Pleasure. It's really, great to be here. Pleasure being here. 50 years next year, mm. Chicago will be celebrating a, an anniversary that's almost unprecedented in rock and roll. How do you keep a band together for 50 years? I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't. You haven't gotten there yet. We're, no, we're, we're, first of all, we're not there, but but uh, we've always enjoyed playing music with each other from from day one, and that has never changed. So no matter what has gone down through the 50 years that we've been together on the road, m many times, you know, seeing these guys more than our families, uh, we've always had fun on stage and I think that's the thing that really keeps us together. Still fun, Robert? Still fun. Uh, uh, I particularly enjoy uh, writing and recording, but at some point, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, we were all sitting on a bus and I and I, it suddenly hit me that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is okay. So, no. so, and, and uh, I've realized that uh, playing music live for a live audience is really what it's all about. Yeah, what is the enjoyment that you get when you are on stage performing and you see your fans out in the, uh, the crowd singing, dancing to, the, to your music? How does that make you guys feel? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. And more and more as we travel abroad, uh, we find, well, even going back 47 years, I think maybe 49 years, uh, when we first traveled abroad, uh, even then, audiences were singing along with Chicago songs, and and that is really a kick, you know, in in places where English English is not the first language. Yeah, <laughs> we get the instant gratification. Right? I mean, you know immediately if someone likes it or doesn't like it, and we've been very fortunate that people like it. Yeah. So. When you decided, or however it happened, to be a, a rock band with horns and woodwinds and really kind of change the dynamic of things. Who was out there maybe already that gave you a sense that, hey, maybe this could work? Or was this all basically organic from within you guys? Pretty much organic. We, we got together thinking that we were going to be a Las Vegas show band. <laughs> we bought suits and we were gonna do some steps and you know, like all the other bands do. And uh, very quickly into the, the club career, we realized that that wasn't gonna be what we wanted to do. So we eliminated the suits and uh, <laughs> started uh, doing original songs and here well, we are. The sound, I mean, the, the kind of music you were doing with the first album on. Well, you know, the prototype, uh, I would say when we were in the clubs, we started doing arrangements of, of cover tunes. But I, I think the, the sound profile was basically uh, the Memphis soul bands, you know, Sam and Dave, mm -hmm. Wilson Pickett, uh, Otis Redding, um, Motown to some degree. And finally, when the Beatles did uh, Magical Mystery Tour and Sgt. Pepper, Pepper mm -hmm. uh, that, that kind of gave us uh, carte blanche. 